by side, side by side, everybody, everybody. I have well, uh, I'd say the ins- the biggest inspiration are my kids, Justice and Stella. And, um, you know, my first book, Daddy Daughter Day, uh, which came out last year, is a song about, you know, joy, just playing with my daughter, playing pretend, going out and playing basketball, drinking tea, building a fort, having a blast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at her there doing my hair. As you can see, the, uh, the hair is, is based on my real scalp here with these beautiful uh, locks I've got growing. And, um, you know, true, true to the page, uh, my daughter loves to put my hair up in buns and bows and twists and turns. So we wanted that um, reflected in the book. And then my most recent book, which came out in May, Daddy and Me, Side by Side, um, you know, it was a book about nature. It's about being out in nature, going camping, going fishing. Uh, yeah, there we are, reeling in a bass from the lake. I, I live in North Carolina, uh, where we are surrounded by luscious trees and birds and frogs. So I spent a lot of time uh, camping as a kid. Um, that book uh, is also about remembering. It's about remembering our ancestors um, and having uh, introducing kids to, uh, you know, th- letting them know that it's okay to be vulnerable and to feel uh, and to express feelings that you miss someone when they're gone. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's something that's so that really struck me reading your book is that, uh, you know, it really gives kids space to process the feelings, which can be really complicated. You know, they can be happy remembering um, all those good times that can also be sad. So why is it so important to have a book like yours? And I also just want to mention, you give such a beautiful tribute to your late father on Father's Day. I saw it on Instagram. And I, like you said, I know this is a lot to honor his memory. So how, did, how does having a book like this really help kids process all of that? Well, you know, uh, as a parent of two children um, who have experienced the loss of their grandfather a couple of years ago, um, you know, there are a lot of questions that come with that, that we uh, as parents have to address. Um, you know, where's pop Up? You know, what happened to him? And um, why can't I see him again? Um, you know, when you're, when you're young, um, loss is not something that's so easy to wrap your head around and to comprehend. Um, so, um, it, I thought it would be a valuable tool for parents who have experienced loss. And it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the loss of a grandparent. It could be, uh, there's lots of ways that kids experience grief. And it is so important to leave space for them to feel what they feel, um, to feel validated in their tears if they have them, to feel validated in their joy if that's what they're feeling. Um, however you feel is okay. And as your parent, I'm here to support you. I'm here to love you unconditionally. I'm here to pour into you and to validate your feelings. Um, and you know, there's a lot of grownups out there with bottled up emotions that, you know, that, um, struggle, uh, to express themselves. I think especially, uh, adolescent boys and, and young men, I would say, even more specifically in, in my community, the African, African-American community, there are a lot of men that I know that um, don't have the tools um, to be in touch with their feelings, to be emotionally vulnerable. And um, if we wanna nurture those things in adults, we gotta start with these kids. <laughs> we gotta make them feel validated, make them feel loved, let their emotions feel um, recognized and uh, I think this picture book is um, a great attempt at showing that that's okay and that it's safe for you to feel your feelings uh, with me. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that I just loved about this book is, like you said, it's the representation of Black men and specifically Black fathers and just any fathers being emotionally vulnerable, being openly affectionate with their kids. I think mod- meditation is in both of your books. Yep. You know, just kind of brought into the, just the routine of their day. Um, 
And that's something that you you just don't see as much. And like you said, you know, that that is modeling for the kids, how they can giving them space and validation for being more in touch with their own emotions. And, and um, it's just so beautiful. Why is it so important to have those kind of images? For kids? Well, you know, I think, uh, I think kids live lives just like adults do that have a variety of experiences on any given day um you know you could be excited about going to the playground but then you know feel some frustration when you don't get the ice cream that you wanted after um you could be excited to see your cousins but like oh man now we have to go to uncle melvin's house like you know <laughs> there's this, there's this gamut of emotions and uh we want healthy ways to represent those things for our kids so that they can see the full spectrum of their emotion reflected and and validated um so you know another important thing i think for for the book um daddy and me side by side that i thought was important is nature like just being out in nature going camping and finding healing in the trees and and singing with the frogs and catching lightning bugs, you know, in the palm of your hand, and of course, and releasing them. We don't want to squish the lightning bugs. Got to remind those kids. <laughs> but, you know, that the the idea that there's healing in nature, and that um, I think, in, again, in the African American community, there are stigmas against certain things. Camping is one of them, swimming is one of them. You know, there's a couple uh, activities that I think are kind of tied in with certain stereotypes that I wanted to break um, because that was my experience. I grew up in nature um, and I grew up finding healing in nature. It's a very peaceful place to be, period. But especially when you're in your feelings, um, I think nature it, it can be a, a particularly healing environment. Right, and, and I think that that's something that because I love getting outside with my kids. And so we read a lot of books about getting outside and diversity in specifically in those kinds of books seems to drop off even more than it does in generally in children's literature. They're just most of the, the people you see in nature books are white. And so it's so great to see more people of color in, the, in books getting out in nature and joint find, like you said, finding healing in nature is beautiful. And, and it also, um, is a place where they connect with the memory of the grandfather because that's something the father in the in the book that's something he remembers from when he was a child and so i also want to kind of tie this into because of course we're focusing on your children's books but it's hard not to talk about everything else that you do you know like your music which is so connected to this as well um and i'm thinking about the wonderful work you did with your mother the um ancestors album could you talk a little bit more about that especially like there's a song called side by side like the book so how is that album especially or just all of your children's music kind of connected to these books yeah well uh same for daddy daughter day uh daddy daughter day is a book that's inspired by a song um mm -hmm. if you go to my first album on spotify it's called dad there's a song daddy daughter day hey daddy daughter day <laughs> and it's just as joyful as it sounds it's like me rapping with my daughter about playing uh, at the park and going to the mall and eating ice cream and having a blast. That's what the song is about and uh, the music video. Um, and then uh, those things inspired the book. And we wanted a way to introduce that, you know, girl dad joy into a new medium in the picture book space. Um, and same with, uh, with uh, Daddy and Me Side by Side. Um, you know, this book um, and the album Ancest Stars both revolve around themes of memory and around themes of love. You know, we, I love Pop-Up, I miss him. You know, these are, these are experiences that are human, um, adults and children alike. Um, if you've been on this planet, long enough to love someone, then you've been uh, faced with the difficult experience of missing them. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they pass away. Sometimes when daddy goes off for work, there's a grieving there. You know, I miss daddy. Um, you know, I miss mommy. I miss, uh, you know, I miss my siblings or my cousins. Um, there's grief that kids experience 
who who live in divorced household who miss you know the memory of 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 what it was to have um you know uh uh both parents in the same household you know these these things are uh normal and we need uh tools uh and books and resources and songs to help us um understand and come to terms and be okay with um whatever feelings kind of enter our hearts because uh, these feelings are normal, they're natural, and, and our reactions to them, uh, even modeling from a parent's standpoint. Um, I remember um, growing up and being told when I skinned my knee, like, don't cry, boys don't cry. My dad didn't say that. I heard that from my friends at school. I heard that from, you know, a camp counselor at the YMCA, like, oh, well, I'm not supposed to cry. I didn't, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? So, so for the parents out there that think they're raising like a strong boy by telling him not to cry, this book, you know, this book is a counter narrative to that. You know, in the book, I say, it's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel. Let it out. You know, you're safe here with me. Um, so I think that's like, that's an important thing to say because the world sometimes is telling us something very different and um we need to to be the world and create the world that we want for our kids and i don't know about you but i want a world with emotionally vulnerable men out there i think <laughs> a lot of what's wrong with the world is men who have low social emotional intelligence yes. taking violence and making decisions you know based on a unregulated um reactions to feelings um and that can be quite destructive uh so we need to we need to nurture our kids and make sure that um you know that they have tools to be able to process things uh healthily definitely and i think like you said i mean part of it is is allowing them to be in touch with their emotions and to let them cry or feel what they're feeling and also i think adults we tend to be kind of dismissive of children's emotions like you pointed out they can feel grief for things that maybe wouldn't even occur to us that you know as far as like after divorce or if they're they don't want to go to their uncle's house or you know whatever it is that i think we tend to be a little dismissive of it and i think you, this is your books do a really great job of validating those emotions for kids and um you also had a question about um how the books are related to the songs, like whether the, the text is the same as, I don't, I don't think they are, right? The text isn't the same as the lyrics. They're just kind of the same theme or, or could you talk about that a little? Oh, hold on. Okay, sorry, could you, we, we lost your audio for just a second. Oh, sure, sure. Um, I, was, I would say they're in the same spirit. Um, the lyrics are not exactly the same um, I had a, a team of great editors over at Little Brown Books for Young Readers that helped me develop the stories beyond the song to have a little more of a, of a narrative arc um, that kids could cling on to and also come back to and experience again and again. Um, so the, the books are a little different from the songs um but they're yes i would say the same spirit um for example one difference on the album side by side is performed by my mother and my daughter um which is cool it's like multi-generational in that way but the book is about me and my son and my father um so that that's one of the kind of differences in feel but this but the message is the same Everybody I have ever loved, love, love is by my side. Everybody I have ever loved, love, love side by side. It's like we are right here with our ancestors. Um, those who who are no longer here in the physical are still with us spiritually. And I mean it when I I mean that literally when I go to the Eno, which is the name of the um the uh, park in Durham where I do most of my kind of nature walks, I can feel my dad's presence. That's not metaphor, it's real. 
I can hear his voice in the wind. I can remember his love and his uh, touch. And I, I feel that in nature in a way that I don't, um, you know, just looking at old footage or hanging out at my house. There's something about, I think, nature, being barefoot outside, sun on your skin, breathing in that fresh air that is healing and I think connects us to our ancestors. And we don't get as many opportunities to do that in this country with the lifestyle that we have, you know, being indoors uh, all the time with the sedentary lifestyle. Um, you know, I think nature by design is, is healing and uh, more of us, uh, whether we're grieving or not, should be out there, um, you know, soaking in the goodness. Yeah, there's something so timeless and about nature. And like you said, it kind of makes you slow down and reconnect. And I, but I was wondering if you could go talk a little bit more about when you were creating the books, because I was really interested in the fact that you've done so many things, you're a producer, you've done digital media, music, of course, and then now you're switching to a children's book. Did it seem like just kind of a natural outgrowth of the other work you had done, or did it kind of take a while to transition and kind of get in the mindset of the new medium? You talked a little bit about how you had to give it kind of a more of a, a narrative arc than maybe the songs, or was that hard to make that transition to, to doing a, a book as opposed to music? Uh, I, it was, I wouldn't call it hard. It was, um, you know, learning a new medium and partnering in a new way with the illustrators, um, you know, was, um, was different. Um, and a joy, might I add, uh, Nadia Fisher, the illustrator on uh, Daddy and Me Side by Side, you know, as I was, as I was writing and then sending drafts to Little Brown and then they would send back the visuals, it was really overwhelming. It was like heart stopping, like, oh, this is exactly like the visual that I imagined um, or even the ones that I didn't imagine. I'm like, you nailed it. Um, so big, big, big love, big props, big shout out uh, to the illustrators. I think that was the biggest difference. It was, I, I feel like I'm a natural storyteller. So um, as a songwriter, you know, I'm writing and I'm writing lyrics, I'm singing them, I'm telling a story. And the story is a little different, but my role is similar, um, except in songwriting, now I'm writing a storybook. Uh, the arc might be different, the length, I might need to parse things out in a, in a slightly different way. But essentially my role as storyteller, I think is in the same vein. Um, what really shifted from music to books was the other co-conspirators uh, in the music space, they were musicians who were coming in to add drums or saxophone or keyboards to a beat that I made or, um, you know, lyrics in some cases of uh, the song Daddy Daughter Day features another lyricist named Jay Gunn, who's also an awesome father and um, wonderful dad, um, you know, that's one kind of collaboration. Collaborating with uh, the illustrators uh, was very different, but equally rich um, because they, as we say uh, in the African-American community, they understood the assignment. Um, you know, they got it. They understood the assignment. They came correct. They delivered at a high level and it really helped elevate the story to have the words be as meaningful and close to my personal experience as they were. And then to have, you know, my dad, the, 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 the visuals in Side by Side are the spitting image of my father. That's what he looked like. And it was very emotional for me to pick up the book and to see my dad looking back at me like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, big, big love to the illustrators. I'm so glad you mentioned them, that the, if you haven't seen the book yet, you guys need to check it out. Nadia Fisher for Daddy and Me, and uh, Olivia Duchess for Daddy Daughter Day. Both of them just incredible illustrators. 
And um, I, I'll, I wanted to, to finish up by going back to, as I mentioned, you've done so much different kinds of work. What would you say is the common thread that connects, you know, the music, um, the books, all of your kind of creative projects? Kind of, is there a common thread that runs through everything you do? Yeah, I would say uh, there are a couple threads. One is love. Love is through everything that I do. Um, I think Daddy Daughter Day and Daddy and Me Side by Side are focused specifically on the love between father and daughter and between father and son. Those are very um, specific relationships. Um, they're ones that, again, we, we don't see enough of. I don't see enough fatherhood represented uh, in a nurturing way, um, in a goofy, silly, loving um, light, especially Black fathers. So that is a thread that you'll see. Uh, and in my music, I think it's the same thing. I would say intergenerational love. Um, for my music, uh, that includes my father, my mom, uh, my daughter, my grandparents, my ancestors. Um, so much of my music is intergenerational that uh, reaches from, from this world to the next. Um, I invite my ancestors into my creative practice. They inspire my words. They inspire the melodies um, and are with me when I'm writing, uh, you know, for, for books and music. Oh. And and so do you think that you'll be writing more books or what's next for you? Do you think there'll be another book or are you working on a new album? Yeah, well, my, my album, uh, Ancestars, is out on all streaming platforms. So go check it out. Um, it is a, a beautiful journey uh, with me and my mom uh, work together on that album. Uh, and my books, Daddy Daughter Day and Daddy and Me Side by Side, you can pick those up at any a uh, place you get books, and there will be more of both to answer your question. Um, I'm always working on music. I'm writing for some uh, television and podcast projects. Mm -hmm. I'm also writing my own original stuff. Um, on the performance side, this summer I'll be doing a puppet show with Paper Hand Puppet Intervention, which is a, a puppet troupe here in North Carolina that's been around for 23 years. So amazing. The music from the uh, album Ancestors, including a scene from my book, Daddy and Me Side by Side, will be portrayed by giant puppets in a, in a summer puppet show in North Carolina this year. I hope you can join us to be a part of that. Um, and then, yeah, just branching off into, into, you know, new mediums in podcast and television is what's next for me. That's, well, we look forward to to following that and hearing more from you. And thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're quite busy, so we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Wonderful books and music, and we appreciate getting to talk with you today. Thank you. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me. I have ever, I have ever loved, love, 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 love by my side.